What is up, you guys? Welcome back to The Locker Room. I am your host and your favorite Kansas City girl, Kennedy Wright. And as always, with that in the locker room, stays in the locker room. Get your playbooks ready, guys. What is good, rookies? Welcome back. In this week's episode, we are going to discuss the importance of having a roster, going over what a roster really means in my terms, and why it's important that you need to have one. Now let's get into it. Now, when we hear someone talk about having a roster, there's plenty of things that you possibly could be thinking of, especially depending on the person that you're using the words for and who's also using them. Maybe they're a player or maybe they're sleeping with multiple people, you know, being a hoe, or maybe they're just someone who sees it as being able to be free and not committed to someone. So they have a roster so they can bounce around from people to people. A couple years, no, it was like a few years ago, I saw this post that some a woman had posted on Facebook discussing how people used to date back in the 80s and the 90s and how it's so different from how we date how we date now. And what I realized was it really got me thinking. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I did not go ahead and apply it to my life personally at that moment yet, but it did get me start to thinking about how we do date now and how I date. Since I can always remember, I've always been what is now classified as a girl who is faithful to a single man. Now, don't get it twisted. It was never a thing of me trying to prove to him that I was like loyal or faithful. It it was none of that. But I really did have like my own legit reasons for it. For one, I do not talk to people easily. That's like male or female. I just don't really like communicating with people that much. I have to like, it takes me a minute. And so especially if you think about like dating, like mm, I just don't like people easily. So that's one. So for me, it takes a very long time for me to find someone that I even want to have a conversation with, let alone share the same space with or communicate with like on a deeper level. Like I honestly can count on my hand how many guys I've ever liked in my entire life and I'm 25, okay? I also never had time to date like multiple people. Like so guys and girls who do that, my hat goes off to you because on top of like from high school, you know, I had club sports, school sports, and then I went to a college prep school. So like the workload, the workload was insane didn't have time got to college you know I was an athlete in college then I had sports broadcasting then I was a reporter then I became a sports editor and so that took up a lot of my time and you know I just I just don't have time I just don't know how people do it so I never had time so yeah I might talk to a guy longer than expected um before I really start to talk to somebody who I know for a fact like I'm just not gonna like him like I, I don't believe in wasting my time so If I'm not feeling it off the bat, I don't even think or see potential. I just never wasted my time. So I was very strict. I'm still very strict about who I talk to. I'm a little bit more, a little more open, I would say. But before now, like it wasn't happening. So when I met a guy, like I said, that I really liked, I would honestly talk to that man for like legit forever. Months, sometimes years. We're not going to talk about that. So for the past four years, I have talked to the same guy and then like one other person. That is it for four years and once again it wasn't about a being a loyal thing or anything it's just I don't know normally it won't take that long also once again it was not about showing him that I was loyal or anything like that I just I really don't find interest in guys that easily you guys like I'm telling you it's crazy but things changed for me so last year in 2021 I started dating differently after what I felt like was like a traumatic change of events that happened between he and I and emotionally traumatic like nothing physically happened to me but like emotionally I began to talk and entertain new people and I wish I could be like yeah you know I was liberated or whatever no like it was not actually like a super plain intentional thing I wasn't in a place of like I want a roster now I want to explore other people honestly if I'm being completely honest I was really like emotionally damaged I was very numb at this time and it was like I just shut my emotions off so I was more open to a lot of things and that's like you know how we got here in a way it was like I said very helpful but at the same time it, there was some things I learned that weren't helpful but we'll discuss that in the beginning I was still doing my usual you know talking to athlete standard so it wasn't really that bad because I was still talking to guys who were in my you know my genre as I would like to call them But the thing that I noticed is when I opened myself up to talk to different people, I was able to kind of see like, okay, these are different things that people have to offer and different experiences. And it really kind of helped me narrow down more of what I want in a partner and what I want in like that forever person from talking to people who were different. So the past years, so I started like dating or whatever, I guess you could say, like when I was or talking to boys really when I was 16. And I've literally only talked to four guys in my entire life. So from 16, I'm now 25. You do the math. like That's crazy. And even though all four guys should have been different, like I kid you not, 
they were really the same. Like a lot of them were the same. I think the same common denominator with a lot of them was for me mistaking their lack of, I don't even want to say like respect. That's like a very extreme word, but lack of just huge interest in like wanting to make me a priority in their life as, oh, they just don't have time because they're athletes. And so that was something that I had to learn the difference that I learned with these other guys I was talking to. Like I said, they were also athletes. And so the thing that I learned is I it really came for me in my life. It came true of they will make time for who and what they want to make time for. OK, so I felt like my perspective always was from my past guys is always girl athletes are just busy. They just don't have time. This is that. And it's no, that's not the case. Those ones in particular just maybe are not as interested in making you a priority in their life and adding room and putting you in their calendar probably because they also talking to multiple people and that's not an athlete thing that's just a male thing okay so let me just make sure that's straight we don't like athlete hate you know we don't go generalize athletes on this podcast but that's something i want to make known that's also just a guy thing in general so whether he's an athlete or not a lot of times there's a difference between really evaluate does this man really not have time because he's you're asking and he literally has like priority plans like work and our practice or homework or study hall or is it just like, oh, I got plans and they're always with his boys and stuff like that, you know, note the difference. And so that was something that I was able to realize from talking to different people on the athlete side of that I learned was like what I just said. I was able to see that there are some people out here who can be professional athletes, college athletes, whatever, and still make you a priority and still make time for you, even in the mix of whatever they have going on professional wise. So that's just that on the athlete standpoint. But what I learned in general from these different guys I only would like highlight a couple of few of them you know a few the first guy he was very affectionate verbally affectionate something that was like weird to me I was like oh, what are you doing like even when you're not in his presence like he's very affectionate and I really learned the difference between like guys that are affectionate and guys who are like sexualizing you you know like there's difference but you can tell when a guy is like being affectionate even when you're in person it feels different then he trying to butter you up because he trying to you know make sure you're ready for what's about to go down you know what i'm saying so there's a difference between that y'all gonna kill me because i feel like i'm talking so fast i'm so sorry people are like you talk so fast i'm sorry the next thing with this guy was he was very understanding and supportive of my mental health um there's a difference between guys who can just know or even girls if you're a guy who's dating girls you know that just know like oh mental health is real and you know you should you know it happens everyone deals with it or whatever there's a difference between just acknowledging that it's a thing and someone who like wants to help you get better, wants to make you better, wants to understand how things are going on with you mentally and let me talk to you and talk through it. So to this day, he has given me the best advice on mental health. So I'm really appreciative of that. Also, another thing I learned from this guy is I learned that I really want someone who has like a very diverse like background and has a different set of skills and knowledge than I do. So he grew up in the city. I, he would classify he says the hood like the trenches the projects but like I don't want to say that because I feel like that's rude I feel like that's one of the things that like I can say that but you can't say that you know what I'm saying so he grew up in the city and we were out and we were at different places and and um I don't want to say too much of the identifiable but anyways the point is he was able to notice a lot of different things like safety things that I would that I didn't know anything about and I'm like, wow, really? And it wasn't because I think because I'm a girl, it was kind of a thing of because of the environment that he grew up in was different from mine. So he had knowledge on certain things just like I did. And I like that he respected what I knew because sometimes I'll deal with people and they'll be like, well, you're from the suburbs. So you don't know nothing about real life. But he was like, oh, really? Like, tell me what you know. What do you notice? Like, how do you deal and operate with, you know, people and stuff like that? So in that, I was able to realize those things that were important to me. I want someone who is affectionate because that's something I, I don't get my family's not affectionate family we don't hug we don't get like no so I learned I want someone who is affectionate I want someone who is verbally affectionate that's not just a physical thing it's just even when you're not physically with me I learned that I want someone who is supportive of my mental health you know and supportive as in like let me help you figure this out not just knowing exists and also someone who has a knowledge in areas that are not my areas that I know because I want very well-rounded children. And when I say someone from the city, I'm not talking about, let's, let's just, I want to be very clear about the things I put out on social media because I don't want anyone ever hearing what I say and just taking it and running with it and trying it and not understanding fully what I mean. This is not a, oh my God, I don't want to do from the head. I want, you know how like girls make that a whole aesthetic? <laughs> 
the hood n word. No, that's not what this. That's not what this was. Okay, that's not what he is. He was from the city, but he he was not no hood dude. Like he didn't, you know, not nah. So I don't even want to think of that. I'm saying you need to go out there and get you a dude from the hood. You know, like how some girls are. You know what I'm saying? So we can teach you. That's not what Kennedy's saying at all. Okay, so I want to make sure that's clear. The next guy, he was more a little bit like he went to private school and stuff, so he was a little bit more on my vibe of like what I was used to, but. His dad was an NFL baby, so he has like a celebrity. No, no. we didn't grow up on the same level, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but the thing I learned from him was kind of seeing someone that comes from that that healthy two parent household that already has not a thing of like sometimes you'll be with people and they know what they want to add to their life because of what they missed out on. And then there's some people who they know what they want to do with their lives because of the parents that they have, you know, the relationships that they saw. So it was really nice seeing that and knowing that that kind of exists someone who comes from a very healthy loving household no family is perfect but there are certain things that need to be requirements to make a family work and seeing someone that's like that is okay cool this is kind of the vibe that I want for my family for my kids the next guy all I would say is it helped a lot he had a lot of things that I wanted on my list a lot of things but the main thing was he wasn't really accepting of like my mental health or the struggles or the past life I've had. He was more like, everything is just fixed with working hard and get up. You're just, you know, you're just being a crybaby. So yeah, that ain't gonna work, baby. That ain't gonna work. Oh, nah, baby, that ain't gonna work. (laughs) The last guy I'll kind of bring up to give another idea of like ranges of like, the point is I want you guys to see a different wide range of different things I was able to notice from talking to different people. This last guy, he was very masculine, okay? Um, Very masculine, not like, I mean, physically, yes, but that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to like his personality. He's someone who's very masculine and he is what in the Bible they talk about, like being um, submissive to your husband, that kind of man who leads and, you know, takes charge. That was definitely what I got from him. And it was not a being submissive in a way of like what I say goes you know some husbands is just very demanding no like that it was just that's what he likes to do he wants to take care of you he wants to leave you know he wants to have a household he wants to be the man of the house but you still have like a say in everything of course you know what I'm saying so I learned in that process this is what I need for sure add it to the top of the list why do I need this for several reasons for me like I realized as now it's called a soft life um you know tiktok and the aesthetic baby i want a soft life i've always known that i've always been like uh, i want to see you stay at home mom i want to you know like i want that vibe i want to know that my husband's gonna take care of everything you know i don't want to be in a relationship where i go to sleep at night and i'm like shoot i hope everything's straight but you know what i'm saying like he's not confident and secure in who he is so he ain't gonna let you know that y'all are really struggling with something financially until like it happens because that happens to a lot of women like you'll hear about it like men will lose all their family's money he thought he could fix it and he couldn't I want a man who's conf- confident enough in leading and having very good communication so that I'm never worried about is the shoe gonna drop because you're gonna tell me when it's about to happen you know so I've learned that I feel like too it kind of goes just to personal like that inner child thing I never really grew up feeling like safe or feeling that like everything's taken care of kind of vibe so being with a man who is somebody who is very you know masculine and someone who's very I'm gonna take care of everyone everyone in this house is under my responsibility that's something that I really like learned that I needed and I'm glad I discovered that because that goes to the top of the list I've just never been that like I'm as independent I'm doing everything by myself like no come fix my tires uh, not my tires like come fix my flat tire you know what I'm saying I'm a princess like I don't want to do none of that <laughs> I'm gonna work and you know push my you know do my weight I'm gonna you know make sure our bills is paid but I want a soft life baby like let me tell you I'm not Miss Independent I'm not I'm gonna be CEO of a company if a man can do it so can I like I already know that so I don't need to get no job like that and be gone all the time to prove that no offense to those women who are like that but that's just not Kennedy okay I can fulfill my destiny my life needs from the comforts of wherever I am don't worry my presence is always no I could always go on and on on this topic I'm sorry but I might do a whole episode on it so I don't want to but one thing that I want to talk about right now is like I said whatever I put on the internet I want to make sure that things are clear and I want to make sure that no one takes what I say 
in the wrong way and they end up adding any type of harm or anything to their life. The thing I want to mention is all of this is important. I feel like experience, yes, is the best teacher. I feel like trying different things is the best. But the number one thing that I want to say is you have to do all of it responsibly, safely, and in a healthy way. I want to make that clear before we go any further in case this is as far as you get, okay? Because the good thing about those guys that I listed, they were people that I was interested in. They were people who I was like, okay, I can talk to them. They weren't just any old anybody. I still kept my same requirements of kind of how do I feel? Am I safe with this person? How do I feel like, is this person going to harm me or put me in harm's way? Like those things were still factored in. And sometimes I feel like our friends or family will tell us like, your standards are too high or this, this or that. And what we end up doing is putting ourselves in situations and around people that we have no business being around because we hear that and we start taking down the things that are really important, like the safety factor. So I just want to say to make that clear Please be careful and please do it safe and responsibly of just, you know, exploring. I feel like you can explore a lot of ways. Like, so for instance, for me, what I always like to say is someone being an athlete is just equivalent to someone being black. Okay. So if I say I like black guys, okay, there's a wide range of just because a guy's black does not mean that they're all kind of the same. Okay. Like I don't even mean looks. I'm talking about just how they are, the person, the personalities, like everything is different. Just because a guy's black does not make him literally, you know, check every box. Like you still have to trial and error and find the right person. Same difference with athletes. Okay. Everyone thinks that, but no, they're all different. Just because he's an athlete does not mean he's literally going to be exactly the same as other people. Certain mindsets might be the same because of culture and things like that, but they're all so different. There are several types of athletes, I just use this as an example, that I would never talk to because they don't give what I need. Um, their lifestyle before and now while they're playing sports and in professional or whatever as a professional athlete are just not of my lifestyle. They're not of my caliber. Like I don't want to be with somebody who, okay, I don't want to name no stuff, but y'all know what I'm saying. There are some who live different lifestyles than others. Okay. Okay. okay here's a perfect example. Everyone makes fun of Russell Wilson and compares him to future and says he's weak. I'm sorry, I promise you and everyone who knows me knows I will be with a Russell Wilson before I ever touch a future, okay? Like, no offense to future, but he just is not of my same environment. I wouldn't even know how to function in a trap house or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, (laughs) what I am trying to say is you need to pay attention. Maybe your standards are too high in regards to how much money he makes, things like that. But that does not mean you go out of whatever your comfort zone in is and what type of people you like because you never want to be out of your element. So like me, yeah, I'm not going to be hanging with Future at the trap house or when he goes and does stuff. I probably want to be with him and his friends because the Future that we know now, like he's not. But you know what I'm saying? When he was active, that's not my environment. And so you just need to be careful because you can end up in situations that you have no business ending up in. Because you're trying to try and experiment with other guys. No, have a roster and experiment within the realm of what you like and the type of guys you like. That ended up being a little longer than I was trying to say. Hopefully it makes sense. But like I said, I just wanted to make sure I have this huge disclaimer on here. Because I will say there were some guys I talked to last year. (laughs) Y'all had no business talking to them. Literally to this day, I still get the ugh just thinking about it like why did I even communicate with them because I know dang well they were not of my caliber one was in the NFL one wasn't he's a retired athlete but it doesn't matter you see what I'm saying like there are different types of people you know not doing anything with your life you blowing through money like I look back and those are the things I regret it's not when relationships don't work out you always regret when especially when it's somebody who you're like you I had no business talking to you in the first place so I want to make sure that that's important and that that's taught before I move any further with the rest of talking about like the benefits and stuff you know I don't want any I just don't want anyone going through things um at the expense of taking some advice that I said on the internet okay or you learning the same lessons I learned that's why I have this podcast I just want to share all my experiences with you so that is why I wanted to make sure we took a time out to really talk about that part
the benefits to me of having a roster. So if you haven't gotten the vibe yet, like, so when you have a roster, okay, that means you have a wide range of people to choose from. They come with different skills, different things. And the number one thing that I think has been helping me is although, yes, I am definitely looking for a husband, that does not mean I require every guy. Like some girls, sometimes I'm looking for a husband and like, they're just like very gun ho on a guy. Like that's not necessarily what I'm saying. The point is I only talk to people who I could see myself possibly being with if we continue to see where it goes. There are some people, you know, that you don't want to be with. Okay. So like, like I, I hate to keep breaking it up, but the future example I know for a fact I would not marry a future. So why am I wasting my time dealing with him when I know like I would want that long term? Like don't waste your time. Okay. So when you have this roster, make sure there's people on there that you legit want to get to know, really see what's happening. Don't just put, it's, this is not a hookup roster. Okay. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. That's not what the girl talking about today. Okay. The benefits I saw of having a roster was I was able to talk to different people at once and I was not super invested or clingy in one person. I won't speak for other girls, but I will speak for me. I sometimes can get like that. Like when you talk to one person, like you're super excited. You want to talk to them. Then you don't hear from them because they're going on with their life. And I'm like, oh, I haven't heard from him. Then it gives you anxiety. Then you can't, you know, do the work that you need to do. It keeps you from doing things. So for me, it was nice because it was like not one person had the exact same schedule, you know, as another person. So it was cool because their time was divided so I always kind of had someone I was communicating with so I wasn't too obsessive over one guy who I hadn't heard from because he's living his life that was that was very needed especially too because we were very quick to address it and sometimes they're literally just busy sometimes they're at trainings right now fall camp's coming up and training camp they're busy or he has film he has study and they'll let you know like oh my god I'm so sorry I mean don't get me wrong they could be lying but you know what I'm saying The thing is, when we react first, it kind of freaks them out. So it kind of gives me a chance to really kind of see the vibes of what's happening and also just not make things worse and make him be like, bro, she tripping off rip when really it's just a PTSD of the past dudes we're talking to. The thing we have to understand is men, (laughs) men believe they can talk to and do whatever they want with anyone until they're literally exclusive, like in a full blown relationship. And honestly, they're correct. That's how it's supposed to be. Like that was the point of the post that I saw like back in the day, they used to go on dates. You're going on dates with different people. Um, That doesn't mean you're always sleeping with all of them, but you're going on dates with all these different people. I mean, no shade. You can do whatever you want with your body, of course, but that does not mean that. And that's not what I'm referring to, but that does not mean that that's happening at the end of the night or whatever. When you're talking to multiple people, I can't speak, like I said, for all girls, but I know for me, sometimes you'll be kind of super invested in this one guy and you're like I don't want to start over so you let a lot of things he does pass and you don't cut him off but if you have a roster of people that you're communicating with that you actually like that you're you know it's a good vibe so we'll see what's up you have no problem cutting so-and-so off because he did this 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 or that or he disrespected you and you know his apology is fake he gonna do it again when you're talking to multiple guys you're actually able to it's just easy you can just get to cut him off like whatever the thing you need to also notice is guys do not settle okay he gonna talk to as many people until he find that right one and he'll keep you around in case you might become the right one but he gonna talk to multiple people until he find that right one and that's when you'd be left looking crazy like we put i put so much time in this he's like i didn't tell you to be that we was exclusive so don't be that girl on the other end that's like dang I invested all this time in this one guy and he's coming to me. Sorry, I can't, I can't mess with you no more because, you know, I found this girl. I'm going to be with her. And then you're like, what do I do now? Always have yourself available. Always have yourself a, a roster of men that you are communicating with because you never want to waste your time, years in life and go through pain because you were so invested in one person when that person was not as invested in, as you were. Y'all wasn't together. Okay. Now let's say that you're on board. Okay. You're like, okay, cool, Kennedy, I'm here, I'm here, I'm listening. Let's go over how you actually have a roster. Now, to be clear, again, just because you have a roster does not mean you have to sleep with all these men on that roster. Do you? Do you? But it's something I, you know, like I said, I personally, you don't have to. I'm just going to say that. You need to build men or boys, you know, depending on your age, who actually, who you actually want something with. Okay, not just any dude that shows you interest or just someone to fill a spot like you want to make sure it's somebody who you actually want to get to know someone who you actually want to communicate with 
and see if things could happen. Because those ones that you know off rip up front that you are never would have anything with, don't waste your time. If you already know, then don't. Because let me tell you something, having all bums on your roster, baby, it's not a flex. Okay, if you have all athletes, but they're dumb jocks, girl, that's not a flex. <laughs> Okay, that's not a flex at all. Having a roster that's full, but all you basically have is just space holders, it's not a flex. Like they need to be men of quality, men who actually have value. And when I say quality, that does not mean how much money he makes, his status, what kind of car he drives, none of that. You know, what's his career? That's not a that doesn't define a man's quality. Okay. But a quality is just someone who actually has something of substance, something to bring to the table. And I don't mean financially, because you can bring a lot of things to the table that aren't financial. I don't want anyone thinking that. I don't, I don't, that's not the money thing in it. Being able to provide, if you're older, that'll probably be on your list. But you know, he actually brings value to your life. And you have to be able to give everyone a fair chance. Okay. You never can really put someone super higher on the list. The thing is, when I say that you need to give everyone a fair chance and you can't have anybody else higher on the list, the biggest thing for you to understand is you want it always to be that until you are exclusive with this person, you're always open. Because for us, we really like somebody when we put them on a high list, everyone else shuts down. Men don't do that. Okay, you can be his number one, but he's still going to show two, three, four, five, and six, honestly, the same amount of attention as you until you're exclusive. So that's why I say you got to, you cannot cut off everyone else or be like well they're not number one like him don't do that still give everyone a fair chance until that man makes you to make that commitment to be together okay if you are going to build a healthy roster okay you have to be willing and able to cut his ass like his coach did okay if he acts up and is not performing the way he does you have to you need to stick to your your rules your requirements what you want okay this is your team which is your life you are the coach okay you the gm baby okay put his ass <laughs> in free agency like they coach did last season you see what i'm saying like what do coaches always tell them it's nothing personal it's just business and that's how we need to see it that's how it needs to be for us we need to be that way about ourselves and our environment and who's around us and who's in our space okay it's nothing personal you are a great person but you just cannot be it for me because guess what he does it to you so you need to be the same way and honestly stick by it because you do not deserve to be to suffer because that man can't perform so like a coach does by you know having a roster makes it easier for you to get rid of those weak links those people who you just oh, okay well i don't know no girl bye okay that's kind of a rough drive just an intro into into it and you know the journey of what i'm doing for myself and what i have been doing i would love to make more content on this experience so you know, we can all do it together and really, like I said, continue to learn some things that I myself need to learn for myself. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please be sure to rate the show on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Please be sure to follow us on Instagram at Casey Locker Room Talk. And also, you guys, don't forget to get some merch. We got t-shirts now and tanks because it is hot out here and I'm going to do a fall drop too for like football season back to school. So you can always get our merch at CaseyLockerRoomTalk.com. It's linked in every bio that you could possibly find if you guys and remember remember guys if you ever feel bad just remember he's gonna do the same thing too and he's already doing it love you guys bye